Hey guys, so today we're doing uh, this long awaited video for me. I don't know if anyone wanted to see this, but I wanted to do this and it was an excuse for me to buy a lot of makeup. So today we're doing another one of my full face of X brand. Instagram, Twitter, follow me in there. Main channel, where it usually is in the description. But also this channel as of today is on 100k subs. And we started this channel on like April 3rd-ish. So what I'm saying is in just over a month, about a month and like a week, we've managed to have 100k subs, which is incredible. So subscribe and join this, whatever this is. I remember, okay, let's just, before we get further into my rambling, because we know that I love to do that. As you can probably see from the title, today's video is a full face of Fenty because this needed to be done. Come on now, I did Pat McGrath and we're gonna do another queen, which is Rihanna. So what I was saying, what I was saying was the vision is there. Like this is all such, ignore my nails first of all but this is all such cohesive packaging it's all got like a similar vibe to it it's all like minimalistic and just classy and kind of rihanna this all screams rihanna to me so i'm gonna do everything i think the only thing i don't have is eyeshadow but what they actually did was because i spent x amount of money they gave me a free highlighter and the highlighter is blue and purple so i'm gonna use the purple as my eyeshadow and we're gonna do that let's get into it i made this channel because i hit 500k on my other channels i was like promoing this i was like when we hit 500k i'm going to start a second channel and that was like my big like you know pushing thing pushing in every video and i remember one time i read this comment about myself that was like oh if she thinks anyone is going to subscribe to her second channel and if she thinks she's going to get anywhere on her second channel then she is a joke because no one is there for her personality everyone's just there for the tea and they're all going to disappear once the tea is gone and i was like okay that's not very nice but thank you for the input and here we are on 100k in just over a month anyway this is the primer she's got two different primers and this is the hydrating primer if you guys have been on this channel for a while then you know that i love dewy and hydrated makeup so i bought everything that was from the hydrating line rather than the matte line it's like creamy i love this packaging love it so much i love the frosted glass it just looks super pretty oh this feels really nice oh my god this is like super hydrating that's nice it made me feel plump this is the pro filter hydrating long wear foundation which is the one thing i was really excited about because i haven't tried her foundations because the first one she came out with was a very full coverage matte look and i knew that that would be a very bad representation of fenty for me because i hate matte foundation i'm in the shade 120 i already had the concealer and the and one of the highlighters so i didn't have to buy those oh they said to shake it i'm gonna use this much at the start it's super liquidy which i love because i, I hate hate when things feel heavy and usually when things are oh um, ah. when things are liquidy they feel more light wait that's a like good coverage hold on i think what i did was apply too much because you really this is spreading really far if you're just going for a more natural look this looks really pretty. Yeah, this is this is a vibe. Hold on, I think this is pretty. It's definitely got good coverage. I look like a panda now, this always happens. So then we're gonna use, I've had this concealer for a while, but I just don't use it. I love more creamy concealers. This one's definitely more matte and it's very light. So I'm gonna use it sparingly because it's super light and it is more of a matte formula. It kind of came out along the original Pro Filter foundation rather than this one so it's got more of that formula than that one but i'm gonna use it just for the sake of you know doing a whole face i'd definitely pick more creamy concealers over it i love the pat mcgrath concealer i think it's really really beautiful it's the kind of consistency that i love i also really like the kylie concealer see this one is a little difficult to like blend out it's not my favorite concealer like i definitely wouldn't pick it over anything else that i have in my collection right now i think this is good if you have like really oily skin and you need things to stay on but i feel like with this like dewy face this looks not that great see like it's just a little more textured and just unblended i don't know if you guys can what's this hair doing here yeah i think my under eyes are too dry for it because it's sticking to dry patches like right there so i think my under eyes are just way too dry for this um what can i do to fix that I once again have a red eye which is really cool but anyway i pulled the foundation under my eyes i actually already opened the powder so it's just the butter pro filter 
powder. It's not the lightest one. They have like that lavender one, which is supposed to be the brightening powder, but I'm not big on brightening anymore. Like I usually get a concealer that's the same shade as my foundation a lot of the time because I just, I don't believe in it anymore. I'm not going to put powder everywhere right now because I am going to use the new cream product. I'm only going to put it in the places where I don't put the cream stuff. I used a very um, thin layer of that Fenty foundation and I think that's how it looks best. I think when you try to layer it too much, it starts to look cakey. I bought this, um, I actually opened all of these products when I got them, but then I tried to put them back in the packaging so that I can like open them here and make it dramatic for some reason. I don't know why. I saw this face shaping brush that they were using for these cream products that she's released just now. So I have the Cheeks Out Cream Bronzer in the shade Butter Biscuit and the Cheeks Out Blush in the shade Petal Popping. This is what the packaging looks like. It's already got my fingerprints on it because my hands are dirty from foundation. It's just this shade. I think it's a perfect shade. It's not too cool, not too orange. It's in between a contour and a bronzer. It kind of does both of the jobs technically. I just want to see what it feels like. Oh yeah. Oh my god. You can see it warming up to my skin. Like it's starting to get really wet. So I'm just going to go in with this blush. I mean with this brush. That's so, okay, that's starting to look really pretty. Okay, hold on. Okay. I mean, yeah, this is really nice. Yeah, that's like that perfect in between bronzer and contour shade. And this brush is really nice. I am just more tapping it than buffing it out because I hate when you have wet foundation and you start buffing and the foundation starts moving around. Oh, I'm starting to get like the hang of the blending it out. Because here I kind of was like, oh, what do I do with this? Because I don't usually use cream bronzers. I think the last time I used one was when I was really young. I have a lot of dryness in this area of my face. That's why I'm like trying to blend it out because it you can tell. Okay, that bronzer looks really good. I think I really like this formula of bronzer. I don't have any cream bronzers. That's why I was really excited about this launch. So that's kind of how the bronzer and everything looks. I think it looks really pretty. I know a lot of people had a problem with how small these blushes are. They're tiny. They're teensy, teensy, weensy. They are cheaper than the bronzers, just in case you guys were like confused. <gasps> Should I use the same brush as I did for the bronzer? I mean, this is going to be a big deal. Let me just wipe some of that off. They don't even get anything on the brush. Okay, there we go. I heard it was more sheer. I'm going to try the sponge on the other side. You can scrape out a lot and it still doesn't like dispense that much product. So it's pretty, it's pretty safe. I love a cream blush. I love these, the Cloud Paints by Glossier. They're very easy to blend out, even like on top of powders. Yeah, this foundation isn't working with my nose area because it's, it's like lifting a little bit right here, if you guys can see. So I would put like a lot less than I did. I think because I'm used to my other foundations that I've already like tried and tested. I got a little too comfortable. On camera, it all looks really nice. It's just my nose area and this dry patch right here is driving me insane. I have already this highlighter. It's the How Many Carrots Diamond Bomb. It's almost like a gel-like formula and it's just got like suspended glitters in it. So it doesn't have a cast because it's literally just a glitter formula with glitters, but it looks so wet on the cheeks. This is one of my favorite highlighters ever. I got the Kilowatt Foil Freestyle Highlighter Duo for free, but it's not like a wearable shade or anything. Maybe for like darker skin tones, this would be super pretty. But for me, my pasty self, it's the seven day weekend and poolside shade which is this duo i think technically i could get away with this highlighter just a little bit let me swatch this oh my god these are like super foiled yeah i could kind of get away with this definitely can't get away with the purple but i can use it as an eyeshadow in the future this could be a risk um <laughs> okay hold on hold on this isn't too bad if i use a very light hand we can get away with this shade. Yeah, no, that's it's definitely got a pink base to it. Um, and it does leave a little bit of a cast. But if I just blend it out really well and use a very light hand, it kind of just blends into the blush and the bronzer. The thing is, now you can kind of see a difference between where I powdered and where I didn't. Like, this usually doesn't happen, but it's just a difference of, like, textures between where I powdered and where I didn't and shades. So it looks like my eyes are insanely bright yeah this is like lifting like right here 
it's just i don't know if this foundation is like my absolute favorite like i don't think i would go out and repeat purchase it because it's moving around a lot it doesn't like want to stay down even when i do a very thin layer it just doesn't want to stay down the cream stuff definitely works and i want to try it out with just my regular routine because this does lift a little bit i think maybe my skin is just not fenty skin <laughs> that's fine i don't know like from far away it looks okay um up close it's a little lifty. I'm just setting down my whole face with the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders. They basically just blend your whole face together. So I'm seeing if this helps with this situation right here. That looks better. And this still, even though it's hydrating, it still definitely clings to my dry patches. But I think that's just a me problem. But I'll have to try it again, just like a different routine. Maybe, you know, do more moisturizing beforehand. I mean, that looks a little better now that it's all like blended together with these powders. These powders save lives it is more of a learning curve this is a first impression so i'm hoping that once i get the hang of this foundation it will actually work for me because i really 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 want this to work for me i'm just wondering how the cream products would work on top of even just a light layer of powder so i'm gonna have to definitely check that out this is the brow mvp i got it in ash brown which is usually what i get i usually get like an ashy brown medium brown this is, this is my natural brow color and it comes like this it's like a more triangular shape and on one side is the pencil, and on the other side is this weird toothbrush. Does this work to br Oh wait, this actually does grab them pretty well. I haven't used a pencil in so long because I usually just use the Glossier Brow Flick or just the Boy Brow on its own. It's a really nice shade. I love the shade. Oh my god, this looks really nice. Yeah, no, that's a good brow. This is such a good uh, shade match for me because it just like blends in beautifully with my hair look at that that took like no work at all do that on the other side yeah this is such a pretty shade i think it's um even a better shade match than what i used to use which was the answers of beverly hills brow is in medium brown which was a cool tone brown but i don't think they had anything like this like this kind of a shade which definitely works better for me okay this is the best we're gonna get with eyebrows today because clearly they're just not working well i was scared and skeptical of this brush and i kept on like using the wrong side because I'm used to just picking up and going because usually brushes are all the way around. But it's not really well to like grab the hair and really push it up. So if you use the whole like soap brow trend, this could be a good brush for it. The pencil as a whole, not too soft, not too like scratchy. It's perfect. It's good. Then what I'm going to do is take the Kilowatt highlighters and I'm going to use the seven day weekend one, which is what I use on my face and just buff it on my eye. And you guys know that I, if you've been here a while, I, I'm struggling to open this. And you guys know if you've been here a while, even on my main channel, I've spoken about loving shimmery shades in my crease. Like I'm not ashamed to do that. So I'm just going to take some on my finger. It's like that purpley, pinky, lilac shade and just dab it on my whole eye. But this sticks super well with no primer because uh, I have no, like nothing, not even concealer on my eye. This sticks super well to just like my natural greases off the face. Then I'm gonna take just like a random blending brush and put it into the shimmer and then just kind of buff out the edges with whatever eyeshadows left on there from my previous look. So see, it's not actually too dark. It was just basically lifting foundation off my face uh, because I didn't powder it down. The redness of my face was peeking through. This is actually a very light highlighter. If you just, let me put it right there. See, it's like not dark at all. You can really just diffuse it to be a very like, like the difference from that to that of just swatching and buffing it out. I also have the mascara that came out recently. It's the Full Frontal Volume Lift and Curl Mascara. It's just this like really pretty packaging. So I'm usually not a fan of like super fresh mascaras, if that makes sense. Like I like them to dry out a little bit. I've lately started curling only one eye and then doing mascara and curling the other because by the time I get to this eye, the, the lashes have already drooped. This is what the wand looks like. Just an average wand really. Okay, it's definitely giving me length straight away. It's a little wet, which is normal with mascaras because they're fret. I hate myself. What did it say on the bottle? Hold on. So I want to know what they're offering with this one. Volume, lift and curl. I'll definitely say um, lift and lengthening more than volume. I think this is giving more length. Definitely more length than volume. Still a little bit of volume. I feel like if I say length and volume again, I'm going to like summon something. This is what they look like right now. This doesn't really dispense as much product from the get-go. So if you want like a more natural mascara, this is kind of it. I think I preferred the Pat McGrath mascara and they're very similar price points to be fair. Pat McGrath mascara is like weirdly cheap. 
cheap for like a very high-end brand because so if you compare the prices of like pat mcgrath foundation it's 60 uh whereas Fenty's like 30 but then their mascaras are like roughly the same price and I think I liked the Pat McGrath mascara a little bit more because from the get-go it just gave you a lot more volume this mascara gets a little bit clumpy for me like a little spidery it looks like this it's definitely more lengthening than volumizing I wouldn't say this is a volume lift and curl I'd say length lift and curl they look fine they look nice and lifted I have the oh my god why did I do this after mascara I'm an idiot this is the What It Do Makeup Refreshing Spray. I don't know if you had to mix it, but I like to mix it. Shake well, yes. Oh no, it touched. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a nice mist. Did it even reach my face? Oh my God, this is like, such a misty mist. I'm like addicted to this sprayer. This is really nice. Just, I love when you find a setting spray that doesn't leave little droplets on your face. The last product I have for today is the Gloss Balm. I have it in the shade Sweet Mouth, which is more of the like recent shades that came out. And it's just like a nice pinky. Let me smell it, because everyone said the smell was nice. Hmm. Nice. Wow. It's not sticky at all. But it's got like a glassy effect without being sticky, which I really like. This basically reminds me of the Kylie High Gloss Formula. This is what that one looks like. It looks great. This is one of my new favorites. I love this lip gloss. It's like my lips, but better. Okay, so let's do a rundown of everything <laughs> that we opened today. So it's Angelica from the future because I couldn't let it rest uh, that I didn't like this foundation yesterday. So I tried it again. I'm wearing it right now. It took a lot of up close pictures because the thing is, even yesterday from far away, this foundation looked really nice on me. But then you get up close and you start to notice like little, little things that I don't really get with my other favorite foundations. So this is what it looks like from far away. It looks dewy and nice, but then I'm gonna insert some pictures up close of kind of in between my eyebrows because on video, you can't tell that anything's wrong. But then I get, you know, pictures up close in front of like a window and you can kind of tell what I'm talking about. So there is some settling right in between my eyebrows, which is one of my problem areas, but I can usually get away with it with my favorite foundations. So for example, the Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Foundation doesn't do this for me. Um, the It Cosmetic CC Cream doesn't do this for me. And my glossy skin tint doesn't do this because it's very natural and very like dewy glossy it kind of just like goes over everything this area right here is a little bit of a problem um i've managed to dial it down today i really did a completely different method of applying the foundation so i applied it with a brush i applied a super thin thin layer like didn't go over any bits twice so it doesn't pick up because what i found was the more foundation i applied if i tried to put anything on top like blush or bronzer that then would pick up the foundation from below because i'm assuming it was a too thick of a layer so it couldn't like set down properly so i applied a super thin layer with a brush I used my True Tried and Tested Glossy Stretch Concealer, which is super dewy and emollient and kind of just, you know, it didn't like disrupt anything. I set everything like I normally would with my Hourglass Ambient Setting Powders just all over my face, just so that I can, you know, get a good base going. I set more heavily uh, wherever I have pores and kind of like more texture because that's usually what works with me um, under my eyes. And then I went in with the Cream Blush and the Cream Bronzer from yesterday, which I am a huge fan of. I even wore them yesterday when I went on a walk, uh, my daily walk, just on fresh skin, like with nothing underneath, just a little bit of concealer, a little bit of that blush, a little bit of the bronzer, and I looked put together. And then I went in with um, setting spray just like three times, just because that's what I like to do with my life. So I did right after I applied the powder and I put on my all night setting spray, that's where these pictures are being taken. So they're before blush, bronzer, highlight, everything else. They're just after the foundation, concealer, hourglass ambient setting powder, and then I took those pictures. And then I'm gonna show you guys pictures of once my full face is done, which are these pictures up close now, which I think they look fine. I managed to make it work. I just don't like having to make things work. I like for things just to work. As a whole, I wouldn't repurchase this foundation, but I'm gonna finish using it because I don't think it looks bad. I think it looks pretty nice. It doesn't bother me as long as I'm not in like direct sunlight where everyone can just like pinpoint different flaws on my face. So I don't really like the foundation that much to like repurchase it, but I like it enough to keep on using it. And maybe I'll make it work once my skin kind of balances back out to kind of less dry. I love the hydrating primer. It's super hydrating, but it 
soaks in immediately so it doesn't leave that like greasiness greasy feeling that makes your foundation slip inside i think it's great the concealer like always i said i didn't like it and i didn't like it in the video where you watch me put it on and take it off the cream blush cream bronzer chef's kiss they blend out beautifully and i think they just look super natural super dewy super subtle like there's no harshness like right now look it's that beautiful bronzer a little bit of blush i'm wearing the highlight that is a tad bit too dark for me but you can't really tell like i think it looks really foily and nice it's the highlighter that i got for free but i love the diamond bomb even more i think it's got that like something to it that no other highlighter i have has i love the brow pencil and the little brush on it i think it's so cool it, it grabs it like almost sticks to the hairs and then like brings them right up and it's a beautiful shade for me personally so i think that's why it works for me uh super fine tip not too soft not too hard the mascara i'm wearing it right now i'm going to insert pictures of where i applied it the way i would apply every other mascara which i hated it and then i applied it with like a really light hand and just went in and super tried to separate these lashes but not do a super thick coat and that's the difference between my eyelashes right now if you like this look then this mascara might be for you. I think my natural eyelashes are just a little bit too long and too separated for it to work because I end up looking like a spidery mess. They start to like, the more I try to blend them out, the more they just stick together because they're too long and too unruly. So I think if you've got short lashes and you want to make them long, this mascara might be for you. But I just have other mascaras that I like more. I like the Pat McGrath mascara. It's incredible and they're roughly the same price. So I'm not going to, you know. The lip gloss makes your lips look photoshopped. Look at this. It like almost is thick, but not annoyingly thick. It's thick enough to like even out the lines in your lips and make your lips look like you have filler in them, but then it's not so thick that it's sticky. Like no strings, nothing. It looks great, feels great, smells great. So lip gloss is incredible. Did I try anything else? Oh, the brush for the bronzer really good i use it for the bronzer and the blush and i think it looks great it, like blends it out just right and i think that's all i tried yesterday so that's kind of my verdict on everything the foundation was fine i just don't think it was something that i would repurchase but everything else pretty much except for the mascara was a hit so overall i think fenty's passing the vibe check here that's it let's you know finish this off now if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up comment down below anything comment down below and subscribe because i post videos every time i think of something so hit that bell and be notified when that's happening social media links and main channel in the description and i'll see you in my next one bye guys